The most effective and widely used therapy for obstructive sleep apnea is the CPAP, or Continuous Positive Air Pressure Machine. Through a mask, air is introduced into the airway to keep it open through the night and to eliminate frequent arousals that lead to sleep deprivation. Hello, Chris. I'm Lisa, and I'm going to be setting you up with your CPAP equipment this Oh, hi, morning. Lisa. It's really nice it to meet nice you. It's nice to meet you. Chris, I was evaluating your sleep study, um, and I see that last night in the study you stopped breathing 40 times an hour, which is quite a bit. And then yes. your oxygen dropped to like 85%, which is a lot. And so it's really beneficial to have your oxygen in like 90% or greater. So what the CPAP machine is going to do is going to blow that air into your upper airway to keep it open so that oxygen that you need is going to get to your brain and your heart and other organs. This is going to allow you to be more alert and awake throughout the day so that you can function much better. Um, that sounds great. I know I've heard, um, I know some people that are on CPAP and, and they swear by it. Um, you know, they say that um, even their brain is, well, yeah. is um, clearer. So this is your machine. You have the CPAP machine over here and the humidifier over here. Okay. And uh, the machine can become disconnected from the humidifier, just like that. Now there's a lever underneath this that you can pull and then it comes apart. So if you wanted to, you could take it with you this way versus not taking it okay. with the humidifier. To put it back together, you just kind of line this up and push, okay? Looks easy enough. Tubing goes on the swivel piece here. Okay. Um, the humidifier on here, you can fill it and you just lift up oh. the lever here and then reach in and pull out the water chamber. Okay. Um, to fill it, pour the water into here or you can take the lid off and fill it. And there's like a lever here that I push on that removes the lid. Okay. Fill yeah. line is on each side. I recommend using distilled water. It keeps um, it cleaner. Um, to clean it, you can put it on the top shelf of the dishwasher or oh, hand wash it. That's convenient. Okay? I would start with fresh water every evening just so that it, you have clean water in okay. here. So if you're traveling, you want to make sure that you have dumped out all the water out of the chamber before you put it back in and then put it in your bag. Okay, and then you want to slide this in and snap it down. So Chris, this is the front of your machine and this is the start button. So go ahead and push that button and it's going to start right at the pressure the doctor prescribed for you, which is at six. So go ahead and hit that button. That's called the ramp. Now do you see that it went down to the lower pressure? Yes. And now it's going to take 20 minutes to go up to your pressure of six. This is going to allow you to get to sleep maybe a little bit easier on that lower pressure as it increases and make it more comfortable for you to get used to it. Say you get up to go to the restroom and you come back, you can go ahead and hit that again and start it at that lower pressure so you can get back to sleep. Okay, that okay? sounds good. Now on the side over here you'll see like a flame, kind of little flames, mm -hmm. and then the number. This is the temperature for your humidifier. Okay. It's going to heat the little plate that's underneath the chamber that's going to give you some moisture as you sleep throughout the night. If you scroll it around, can you see how I it's going that, from yes. zero? It can go all the way up to five. Oh, okay. I would start it at the lower temperatures, maybe at one or two, okay. just to get used to it and see what's going to be comfortable for you. If you find that you're getting a lot of condensation or a lot of moisture in your mask that's keeping you from sleeping at night, turn it down. And then when you turn off the machine, the humidifier turns off also automatically. Okay, so on the back, you're going to see a filter. This is the air inlet. So what's happening is the air is coming in through this part of the machine, and then it's being powered up and coming out to you. And you want to make sure you give it free air access. You're going to have a foam filter and then the white HEPA filter. Um, if you have dust in your home, uh, if you have pets, um, things like that will collect on this little filter. Make sure to check this filter once a month and change it. Can you feel that surface? It's kind of rough. That's the rough surface of the filter. That goes up against the machine and you just kind of put it in there. And the foam filter, um, wash this also. It, it tends to get dusty or gray. Wash it in some warm soap and water and just let it air dry and that's going to go on the top of that. 
How often do you replace the um, gray filter? So the gray filter about every six months okay. and the white filters you can replace every three months. Um, up at the top up here is a little card and if you push on this little card it's kind of like the one that you would have in your digital camera. Sure. Um, this is going to record in valuable information that the doctor can use when you come in for your follow-up visit. Make sure to bring this card in when you come in and then he can download that information okay. and see how you're doing with All your right. therapy. Now Chris, as I mentioned, there are several types of masks, so I think the next thing I'd like to do is try the masks on you and see how they feel okay. for you, okay? So the first one I think we'll try is the uh, nasal pillow mask, which goes into your nose, has the tube that kind of goes up in the middle. How does that one feel? Does it feel comfortable? You're not sure yet I'm not about sure it. Yet. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to start it up. Are you ready? I am. Okay. I'm going to push the button in. Now remember, it's going to start right at your pressure of six, okay? I want to start at the pressure of six just to have you see how it's going to feel on your full pressure. Also to see if the mask is leaking anywhere because I want to make sure I have the right size for you. And that one looks like it's fitting very well. So let's start it at the lower pressure. Okay, now we're down to four. I know it feels a little uh, Well, I'm getting air on this one. So you're getting air coming out of here. Do you feel that air coming out? Uh -huh. Put your hand up there. This is the exhalation of your mask. If you do not have a way to exhale out, you're going to feel like you're suffocating. So every mask is going to have an exhalation, so you have an exhalation here. Patients have the opportunity to try several masks of differing design, so they may choose the one that feels right for them. Besides the nasal pillow, there are masks that cover only the nose. I have quite a few people that like this mask. It's I was just going to say that um, this feels a lot better than that. The other one that goes in your nose? There is also a mask designed to cover both the nose and mouth. This is best suited for patients who tend to breathe through their mouths while sleeping. It's really kind of a hard decision. You really, it I is. really wouldn't know until I had it home and, you know, slept with it. And it really takes you using it in your home, with your bed, right. laying down and sleeping and being, you know, able to be comfortable with it. Chris, when you travel with your CPAP machine, you want to make sure that you carry it on the plane. Do not check it. It's considered medical equipment. Um, so you can take another carry-on item on the plane with you. Just make sure that you have it out and available so that they can inspect it. In order for you to get a benefit out of your using your CPAP machine, it's best to start out nightly with using it. And then as you use it, using it four or more hours a night, you're going to get more of a benefit. That may take some time to do that because you're not used to sleeping with something on your face all night and having a mask on and having air blowing in your face. Don't be discouraged. Just continue to try to use it um, and then make sure to bring in the card for your follow-up so that the doctor can evaluate your therapy. Most insurance carriers, including Medicare, will cover the cost of CPAP. Your out-of-pocket expenses will vary depending upon your individual benefit package. We encourage patients to call their insurance carrier to clarify these details. Many insurance companies will also cover the cost of renting CPAP for the first three months. Then, if you demonstrate you're using it as prescribed, your insurance carrier will purchase CPAP for you. Patients are advised to see their sleep doctor one month after starting CPAP. If you're on Medicare, you are required to see your sleep doctor between 30 and 90 days of starting CPAP therapy. Once stable, patients should see their sleep doctor annually or if you are experiencing difficulties.